Um, hello, so today we are going to do this problem, which is part of the weekly contest um, 354 um, that happened yesterday. That uh, uh, Yeah, so the problem is maximum beauty of an array after applying operation. So basically what we have here is we have an array of numbers and the non-negative integer k. So positive integer or equal to zero. And we can do any number of, uh, we can do one specific operation any number of times. So that operation is we choose an index that we haven't chosen before, right? An index of the array. And then we'll replace the number in that position with any number in the range minus k or plus k. Okay? So basically we can shift the number up to k either to the left or to the right, right? Minus or plus. Um, and we call the beauty of the array basically the length of the longest subsequence of equal elements. Okay, so um, the length of the, or you can think of it also as the number of equal elements in the array. And the goal is to return the maximum possible beauty that we can obtain after doing this operation any number of times. Okay, so just the usual problem where you have one operation and you can do it multiple, uh, any number of times you want. Um, except here, there is one constraint is that you can't do it for a position that you did it for before. Because they say, I hasn't been chosen before. Um, and the goal is to return the maximum beauty that we can obtain. And beauty, remember, is just the number, the length of the longest subsequence of equal elements. So it's just the number of equal elements in a subsequence. So let's take a look at this here. So what we can do for this one first, we can take index 1, so here. Um, so the range we can replace with is minus 2 or plus 2, so it's 4 to 8. So we choose 4, we we'll replace it with 4. So now we have this array. And so we choose position 3 now, right, here. Um, and here that means we have minus 2. Sorry, that's not position 3. Position 3 is this one, 2. Um, so there we have minus 2 or plus 2, so we have 0 to 4 range, and so we can choose 4, replace it with, okay? And that's the, now we have 3 equal elements. We can't do better than this because for this one here, um, the range we have is minus 1 to 3, okay? And since we can do the operation on an index just one time, that means we can't reach 4 because we have only one operation, and the operation gets us to 3 at most. And so um, it's only possible to get three. And so we return three here. Okay. So I hope that explains the problem. Now you can see here the array length can be big, ten to the power of five. Um, k also is ten to the power of five. So that rules out any O of n squared solution and any O of n k solution. Um, let's see how we can tackle it then. Um, okay. So how do we tackle this problem? Well, the first the one thing to think about is that. Um, the, the problem says, so if let's take our array here, um, the range we can choose for each number, right, is from the number to k and then num plus k. So this is the range we can choose, it's inclusive. And the number can be even stay the same, like uh, in the ex first example, 4 stayed the same, but num is still in this range. So as long as we pick a number in this range, we should be fine. But since we want to maximize the beauty, which is the number of equal elements, we, we, can tr we can try to do an operation on all of the indices, right? And so if you sort of think about it for each element here, what, what, what is the possibility? So for four, it can be in the range zero to um, eight, but only this because we can do the operation only one time. And then for six, so let's actually write it in a better way here. So for four, it can be in this range, 6, we can choose from this range, which is 6 minus four, uh, 2. Uh, sorry, it's not 0 because it's 2, k is 2, so this is four, 2 and 6. And 6, the range is 4, and um, uh, plus 2, so 8. And then for 1, the range is minus 1 and um, uh, 3. And for 2, the range is... 4, uh, sorry, z uh, 0 and 4, okay? And so if you sort of represent this as intervals, right? So let's say mm, we have an x-axis here, 
with 0, 1, uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, 6. We only need up to 8, okay? And so here, the first interval for 4 is 2 to 6. So the first interval is 2 to 6, like this. The second interval is 4 to 8. So 4 to 8, just like this. And then the other interval is minus 1 to 3, so let's have minus 1 here. Um, so that one is minus 1 to 3, like this. And then after that we have 0 to 4, which is 0 here and 4 here. And so we can just, okay. And so you can notice here, the beauty is when we have, when we, the element, the number of elements are equal. Okay, that's the beauty. So that's what we want to maximize. We want to maximize equal elements. And since the elements only are in this range, well, we just need the maximum overlap of these intervals. So at which point do we get the maximum overlap between all the intervals? And that point should be the maximum beauty, right? Because if you choose that number where the maximum overlap happens, right, then we get the maximum count. So let me show you here where does that maximum overlap happens. Um, so if we take a look here, the maximum overlap happens at this point. Uh, let me grab another pen. So it happens at point four. Okay. Um, so this point of the maximum overlap, we have three. So that's the answer we give, right? And if you sort of think about this, if we take, maybe potentially there are other overlaps. So for example, here we can make two happen. So, but still three. Um, we can make three happen but it's still only three overlaps. If you do six, it's just two. We can only do two. If you do zero, we can only do two. So, but the idea, so, so um, this is also just guaranteed to work because for each number, we have only these intervals that we can move to. Okay, and we want the maximum intersection. So we want the number that gets us the equal elements. So that's sort of here, the maximum intersection. Okay, okay, so now that we know how to solve it, how do we implement this? Well, getting the range is easy. We just go through the numbers and we add to our list of ranges, we add this range for each number. And then the other point, which is finding the maximum overlap between the intervals or the maximum intersection, that's just a um, sweep line algorithm. It's, um, it's like the, or line sweep, whatever you want to call it. Um, because that's the default, that's the main application of sweep line, right? Is to, is to calculate the, the intersection. And how do we do that? Well, with sweep line to find, I, I have a video I will link below um, about sweep line that explains it pretty well. But the idea is we just need to have sort of, so we get these ranges, but we just need them in a way where we have something that tells us the start point. So for the start point, we just maybe add true. And then for the end point for each range, we just have false. And we can have a list of these. Okay, and then we sort it so that we get the the ones we get so that we get it in increasing uh, order of start, and then every time we get a we get a starting point, we have a count. Every time we um, we get a starting point, we do plus one, and when it ends, we do minus one. Okay, and we just would, would need to be careful here to not end right at the point because this is inclusive, so we will need to end. Um, right after it, so something somewhere here, okay? And plus one, minus one, plus one, minus one, and here minus one. And so with this count, right, we will know at any point how many intervals do we have at that point, right? Because when an interval starts, we do plus one, okay? So count, we just increment it by one. And when an interval is over, we decrement one. So at any point, we know the count of the number of intervals. So we just take the maximum of all the counts, right? So pretty straightforward solution there. Um, and yeah, so that's pretty much it. We can, we just get the ranges and then do sweep line to find the maximum overlap. Okay? So let's implement it and make sure it passes. Um, okay, so let's implement the solution we just saw in the overview. So the first thing we need is we need to add the ranges. So let's have ranges like this. Um, and then we just need to go through each number in the array. Um, and then what we need to do after that is just append for each number the range. So that would be num um, the number 
um, minus k and the number plus k, okay? Um, and then once we do that, we can just do the intersection, right? Max intersection. So how do we calculate that? So that will be, um, let's have some sort of events, right? That's what sweep line does, uh, or line sweep does. And so what we want to add for each one is the start and the end, okay? So um, we can go through the ranges. So we have start, we have end in um, ranges. And then for the events, we want to append uh, start, we want to set it to true to indicate that it's a starting uh, point. And for the end, we want to indicate that it's false because it's the end. Um, however, um, one caveat here, this needs to be a plus one because the ranges are inclusive. Okay. Um, and then we want to sort these events so that by start, so that it sorts by start time. Um, and now we can do our overlap, which basically we need the count for the current overlap. And then we want the maximum count, which is going to be the one we return. And so we go through, so each we get the position and we get the type, um, or let's call it is start in the events. And basically if it's a starting position, then we want to increment the count because that means we just have one more interval. But otherwise it's the end of an interval, so we want to decrement. And each time we want to take the max count. So pretty simple. Um, and then at the end we just return the max count. Okay. Um, now if we count on this. Um, so ranges. Um, yeah, sorry, this is like this. Okay, let's submit. And this passes, okay. Now this is open like in time, the sorting. Um, the events are at most two multiplied by the, the number of elements, right? Because the number of ranges is the number of elements. And since we do start and end, it's going to be uh, 2n. So overall, it's over like and still. Um, and here, this is open, right? Because it's just one loop on the events. Um, this is also open. Um, and this piece is also open. So overall, the dominant, um, the, the, the biggest one is the open ligand. So overall, it's open ligand time. Um, now, in terms of space, we are using this ranges list, which is open, this events list, which is open. So overall, it's open space as well, uh, open space. So open ligand time, open space. Now here, this is a little bit redundant, so we can reduce this. Um, and instead of having both ranges and events, we can just have events. And at this point, just make num minus k the start, right? And then num plus k plus 1, the end, right? Because, and then we, we do the max intersections here. Um, so, and then we don't need ranges. So, put on this. Um, we don't need ranges. So, this is just, we don't need this as well. So, a lot shorter. And we can submit. And this passes as well, okay? Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it for this problem. Please like and subscribe, and see you in the next one. Bye.